you're going to make a left Darius. Site the buildings on either side comprise Site 33. Now, Site 33 is kind of a good news story for our Navy team because two weeks ago, we got approval from the regulators uh, from the Waterboard and DTSC closing out this site essentially because they approved the completion report and all the work we had done. So this site is officially clean that we're coming up to. And it's got, uh, you'll see off to the right here the buildings, and then there's an open field to the left where there was a lot of digging that occurred. So what did we find here? Um, we found a little bit of debris, and we found uh, a lot of utility corridors that had uh, some contaminants in them, mostly arsenic and lead. Now the debris was pretty low density, but the arsenic and lead contamination from, from previous years of storing things on the site um, basically led us to have to do some major excavation. And again, we're done with all of it. It's all been filled in. The documentation took a while and we just got approval from the regulars. So this site here, you can see it on your map. And we're essentially going through the middle of the site. Yeah. Yes. So there's this big field and then, and then the site extends over the tanks. Okay, so if you come, come down here and then make a right there is. Then we're going to talk about another interesting site, site 24 that we're going to come up on. Is that site 23? So let me talk to you a little bit about site 24 as we go there because this is not a soil site. I've been talking a lot about soil sites. Again, Site 21, the vessel waste oil site, was groundwater. Site 24 is the major groundwater site on the base. And remember how I said bases are like little villages? They had to be little self-contained islands for the Navy? They had a dry cleaning plant. And the dry cleaning plant had, had some fairly large tanks with chlorinated solvents, right? Like dry cleaning fluid in them. And they operated it for years. Those tanks leaked, and it and the uh, dry cleaning fluid went into the groundwater. So we're coming up on it. It's known. You'll see it. It's a weathered plaque. It's Building 99. And Building 99. You'll also see a, a sign that says Government it's Printing Office. Oh. The dry cleaning plant uh, operated until 1977, and then from 1977 to 1997, it was a Government Printing Office. Huh. It had a couple of other uses too, but that's where what the signage says. And you can stop right here just for a second. So this whole site actually goes this back. Actually, you can go a little bit further, Darius, because there's this building where the dry cleaning plant was. But the groundwater plume, you can go a little forward to the intersection. Um, you can see the groundwater plume. I want to show you how far things can go. Stop, please. Okay. So do you see the tennis courts there in the distance? Can yeah. people see that? The tennis courts there are, well, what you can see from here is the chain link fence around the tennis courts right. that aren't used anymore, right? All right, so imagine that. The tanks were in this building, Building 99. They leaked through the soil column, right? Subsurface through the soil. They hit the groundwater. When a contaminant leaks out of a tank, it tends to go down vertically with gravity, right, through the soil column. It spreads out a little bit, but uh, these solvents went mainly down into the groundwater. When it hits the groundwater, then it doesn't tend to go vertically anymore. It tends to go horizontally with the flow of the groundwater. There's not much groundwater flow on Treasure Island, but all groundwater flows in some direction. And guess where all the groundwater flows in Treasure Island, depending upon where you're at? It all flows towards the bay. Okay, so face towards the bay here. This, the, the, the groundwater contaminants actually over time went from building 99 here. Do you, can you see where the tennis courts are? We have monitoring wells in the middle of the tennis courts that you can see, little metal discs in the ground. The groundwater plume extended all the way from here to there. Now originally the site was 20 acres and it had multiple, uh, what we call plumes, multiple areas of contamination in the groundwater, not just one. Um, and not just one contaminant. There were other sites here where things were stored, were stored like cleaning fluids that actually also leaked out of tanks. There were a lot of underground storage tanks in this area. In this part of the base, when you're looking out here, between here and the chain link fence, that's the greatest concentration of underground storage tanks on the whole base, on the whole island, was in here. They've all been removed now. They've been, they've been yanked. But when we yank them, we, we uh, take samples and we get the contamination levels, right? So what we did on this site is, the 20 acres of it, we had uh, chlorinated solvents up to 64,000 uh, parts per billion. I know that's a number that I don't want to throw too much technical jargon at you, but I want to just show numbers for comparison. And what we did is, uh, for cleanup, we, uh, we did something called bioremediation. 
we put in specific bugs, bacteria, that eat chlorinated solvents, and we shoved them down tubes into the groundwater, and we kept doing that. And we did that for a number of years. And what we found is, in this particular location, it worked. It doesn't work everywhere, but in this location, it really worked. So now the highest levels of contaminants in, uh, um, in anywhere on this site is 1,000, not 64,000. Now that still doesn't mean we don't have to go back and polish it up and do further work to get it down from 1,000, um, and we plan on doing that. But um, that shows you the improvement that can be made just by using technologies like injecting bacteria that actually eats uh, the contaminants and, and then destroys them uh, by eating them and ingesting them and then excreting them. And that's a pretty, uh, pretty well-known technology used across the country. Fortunately, it worked here. Um, and now the plumes that we have, the contamination levels, remember it was spread over 20 acres originally, it's now down, the whole area of contamination is less than half an acre. So, the Navy is working on a proposed plan on what to do about that half acre, and we're going to come out with the proposed plan in late January, and we're going to have a special meeting on the island at Casa de la Vista, if you want to come, sometime in late January, and we'll talk about it, and we'll talk about what the Navy's proposal on dealing with that remaining uh, contamination in the groundwater is over that half acre. Um, and from there, we'll go into a decision document uh, with the regulators on what to do to clean it up. And then, in 2016, we want to clean it up and close out the site. But that just shows you, we went, we shrank it from 20 acres down to about a half acre, from 64,000 down to 1,000. And then, um, uh, we're going to have to do, obviously, some more, some more. We're going to use some different technologies to get it down lower, because it's got to get down to some pretty low levels. Again, this is going to, this area that we're in right now with the bus butts up against a residential area, right, Bob? They're going to build some residences in this area um, back over. You know how we just drove through Site 33? Those are going to be some residential buildings. Oh, so it's got to be down to residential levels of cleanliness. Keith, I, have a, I have a question, but do you want me to ask it now or do you want me to hold on? I, I'd like, yeah, please hold save on. your questions to the end. Appreciate sure. it. Thanks. Okay. Okay.